You won't let go 
Take us right through, O oh God, and I give you praise and I give you glory. I will exalt thee, O God, for there is no other worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and honor and praise belongs to you, O God. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We believe, Lord, that mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being saved. God, we believe, yes, we can see the wonders are still what you do. The bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being saved. God, we believe, yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Because mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Yes, we believe a lot. That miracles are still what you do alive. God, we believe you. Yes, we can see the wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do.
are my delivery. You are my refuge. You are my hope. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. I will bless your name, O oh God. I will bless your name. Do you know one of the most precious ways to worship the Lord is to come unto him just believing. The field has been rent. The way has been made into that throne of grace. We can enter with boldness. Within the
when I was meditating on this message, the Lord told me many of his people were singing that we song that we sung there. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. All through life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. And because they're not been taught the word of God, they don't realize what they're singing. Because if they've been taught the word of God, they would know when they sing that song. To be like Jesus. Is to reach out and touch other people. Compassion on the sick, compassion on the lost. To be like Jesus, we do what he said and what he done. And that's what we want to look at today. We've talked about this before, but we're looking at it in a different angle today. Hebrews chapter 1. We're looking at it from the angle today that there's no escape. For the people of God that lack such a great salvation, where does the ungodly and the unsaved stand today? That's why we're going to, for a day or two, we're going to dive into how Jesus acted when he was on earth, what he said, and what he done. And Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 said, God, who in sundry times, in divers manners speak, in time passed unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by a son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Simply what the Word of God is telling us here, the Old Testament times are gone. That's how it was in the Old Testament. There was the, the setup of the prophets, the priests and the high priest. And that's how God spoke to the children of Israel. But those days are gone. When it says there in verse 2, In these last days, as he's spoken unto us by his Son. That is entering in, Jesus ministered unto the time of the old covenant. But he was often preaching about the new covenant to come. And we're not ruled by prophets. Or by the high priest that's appointed once a year. We are under the power and authority. Of the crucified resurrected Christ. And that's the message that we must get out today. That's the message that we must understand. When we have that desire to be like Jesus, we got to know how Jesus talked and how he acted here on earth. And then in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. When we read the Gospels, we hear what Jesus' teaching was. We heard what he was doing and how he done it. So we have heard. And we got to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard about Jesus, lest we should let them slip. And a boy is the word of God slipping on our land today. It's slipping big time. I heard a man preach a message on Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. That man preached a message on these words. Jesus went about doing good. He never took the full contact of the verse. And you know why he didn't? Because he couldn't preach that verse in its full context and still believe the nonsense that he believes. Our land has a, a plague on it today. The gospel's not been preached. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. You know what that plague is in the pulpits of our land today? The preaching spiritual healing in a roundabout way. Anything that's dead doesn't need healed. It needs resurrected. And Ephesians 1 tells us, talking to us, the church, and you has he quickened who were dead and trespasses and sons. Every human, born, every human being ever born, Adam and Eve were created. But they were created spiritually alive. And when they fell, they died spiritually, and everybody born after that's born spiritually dead. So our spirit doesn't need healing, the spirit needs resurrected. And this is what's happened on our land today. They're going to great length to preach spiritual healing, which is not in the Bible. Because if they were to preach it in its fullness, they would have to change their doctrine. And I heard that preached last Sunday morning from a so-called Pentecostal church in Northern Ireland. That's why people are going nowhere. That's why people are making a confession and they're in confusion because they don't understand that when we come to Jesus, Jesus said, accept the man, be born again. And these preachers are using these terms. That's the term that he used, we must be born again. And then he goes on to talk about spiritual healing. I want to tell you, when we're born again of the Spirit of God, our spirits are resurrected. And this is where the devil's gain and ground. Because the word of God has not been preached. You know the story about Jesus when he was here and he was going into that city called Maine. And there's a funeral coming out of that city. The son, only son of a widow woman. Jesus didn't go over and say to that dead man be healed. He went over to that dead man and he resurrected him. So if our spirits are dead, when we're genuinely, truly born again of the Spirit of God, we're resurrected spiritually. We come into fellowship with Jesus. We come into fellowship with the Lord. So in chapter 2 of Hebrews, it says, Therefore, let's give a more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time should we let them slip. We must hold on to the things that Jesus said and Jesus done, because he is the example that we live by. In John 6 and 38, Jesus made this statement. He said, I haven't come to do my own will. But I've come to do the will of the Father who sent me. So we can take an assurance 
that if Jesus said something or Jesus done something, it was the will of the Father and still stands today. Many people will preach today that Jesus came to save sinners. But very few preach that that's not all he done come to do. Verse 14 of the Hebrews 2, 2 that we're looking at there. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. That's one of the reasons that Jesus came. Thank God he came to save sinners. But he came to destroy the devil. 1 John 3, 8 tells us not only did he come to destroy the devil, but 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose, Jesus was manifest in the flesh. In other words, for this reason, Jesus was born of a virgin, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So we are a privileged people today. The devil has already been destroyed. His works are destroyed and there's no authority over us. That's what Jesus came to do. What is the majority of preachers denying in our land today? The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God. Whenever the prophet Isaiah spoke in chapter 61 about Jesus, He put it this way, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is talking about Jesus. Because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. And has sent me. The Father has sent Jesus. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the open of the prison of them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spread of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That's why Jesus came. If Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he did, we read in the Gospels where Jesus came down to the river Jordan and John the Baptist was baptizing there and baptizing unto repentance. Well, Jesus didn't need repentance because he was a spotless lamb of God. But he done it to show how we come to know Jesus. He was giving us an example that when we repent and call upon the name of the Lord, he put it this way in Mark 16. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. But Jesus went through the waters of baptism, not because he had to have repentance. He went through the waters of baptism for an example Unto everyone that will call upon the name of the Lord. And then after that, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And after that, they went into the wilderness. 
And they was tempted forty days and forty nights. And they didn't give in. They come out full of the Spirit. And then the miracles begin to happen. That's the plan of God for the church today. But what about the people that are lost night? Whenever the the word of God in Hebrews chapter 2 asks, How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Which at first began to be spoken by the Lord. Imagine that. And people come and tell us and, and try to tell us that this only started to happen in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In some place in America. The devil's got a cheek on him. Downright playing out lies. The word of God says here at first began to be spoken by the Lord. And not only was it spoken by the Lord, it was confirmed unto us. We're singing this morning, we believe and we can see that he's still under signs, wonders and miracles. This word was began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will, to the will of God, the will of Jesus. So if the warning goes out to the church, how's the unsaved going to escape? That's the point that I want to dwell on today. If the devil has deceived the preachers and the pulpits, how's people going to be saved? How's people going to be healed and delivered and set free? You see, when we sing that song, Oh, to be like Jesus. What does that mean? That means to have compassion. And the drug addict, and the drunkards, the dying tonight. That means to go and don't counsel devils, cast them out. Not one example in the word of God of Jesus trying to counsel a devil. He cast them out. If we want to be like Jesus, that's what we got to do. If we want to be like Jesus, we got to be laying hands on the sick and seeing them raised up. To be like Jesus is like that verse in 1038, Acts 1038, we read a few moments ago. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now did he just pick out the sick people that were oppressed of the devil or is all sickness from the devil? Well, he healed all that came to him. So sickness and disease is of the devil. It's part of the fall. And if we want to be like Jesus, then we will press forward Press towards the mark of the high calling of God. And people will hear the truth. Repentance is no longer preached in our churches. A lot of people object when they hear repentance preached. I got a letter one day from a man, and he said it was a false prophet because I was still preaching repentance. That's what's going on in our church today. 
Jesus is our example. If we turn to Matthew 4, In verse 23, if we want to be like Jesus, this is what we'll be doing. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Jesus got into the synagogues, but you and I wouldn't get into some of the, the churches today. But what was his message? He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We've been hearing about the gospel of the kingdom now for a number of weeks. So what's involved in preaching the gospel of the kingdom? Healing all manners of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. He was preaching and he was teaching. And he was healing. That's the work of the church today. Then if we go to the end of the Gospel of Matthew to 28, we see the instruction to the church. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And he came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why could Jesus say that? Because he's about to go back to heaven here and he's already destroyed the devil, he's already destroyed the works of the devil. The works of the devil is only effective against those that are not relying on the power of the blood. He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Where does that leave a lot of churches today, baptizing in the name of Jesus? And then it says, teaching them to observe all things. All things that Jesus ever taught. All things that Jesus ever done. We've got to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And though I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. We need to be teaching, we need to be preaching, and we need to be healing. We need to be active in the, as Jesus was active in his day. Then if we go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, in other words, beginning at home. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. What is the promise of the Father? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. I send the promise of the Father upon you. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Anybody on pulpit today, and I want everybody to hear this, whoever listening to the internet, if you're standing in a pulpit today trying to preach some sort of a gospel and you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're neither sent nor appointed. Think about that when you look on the faces of all those people. Where are they going to spend eternity? 
This is real today. This is reality. And they led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while they blessed them. He was parted from them and carried into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. In another gospel it says that they, they began to worship, but some doubted. Are we worshipers today, or are we doubters? Some worship, but some doubt it. And before that it said that we went to a place out in the wilderness, where Jesus had commanded them to meet them there. Is our ear open to the Spirit of God? That we are where he commanded us to be. Because it's only there that he will meet with us. We will not rub, run rough shot over God or over the Holy Spirit. Last week's uh, newsletter was very informative on the spread of discernment, of knowing what's of God and what's of the devil. And if ever that gift of discernment's needed, it's needed today. Because there's so many false prophets and false teachers about. We need to know the word of God. We need to know the voice of God. We need the baptism and the Holy Spirit. We need to know the gifts of the Spirit. And if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Repentance has not been preached and separation has not been preached. Many young people are today in a great gathering of, of, of a whole lot of people. The three gospels have not been preached. They think they're making a decision for Christ, but they're not. Because the Word of God says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. His old circumstances is not going to satisfy him anymore. All they're doing is joining a line and putting Jesus in the end of a line of saints, and scholars, and believing a lot of nonsense. But the Word of God in 2 Corinthians 6 talking about this situation. In verse 14, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you're going to have a relationship with Jesus, there will be no desire or there will be no fruit. If you want to have a, keep a relationship with that idolatrous situation that you find yourself in, For what fellowship is righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? These young people are being deceived. Jesus doesn't belong on the, at the end of a line of false doctrines and, and sense and whatever they want to call them. Jesus said, I am. The only way, the only truth, and the only life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. So there's got to be a separation. There's got to be a changed life. There's got to be a turning away from the false doctrines and the snares of the devil. 
What communion is light with darkness? What concord with Christ, with Baal? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? There's got to be a separation. We've got to come out of false teachings and false doctrines. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. We can't be a Christian and be involved in idolatry. We can't be a Christian and put a snare over people telling them that this is going to take them to heaven and something else is going to take them to heaven. And if you have enough money, you can pay yourself there. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There's got to be a separation. The temple of God is no fellowship with the temple of idols. What agreement has the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God. When we are truly born again of the Spirit of God, Jesus dwells within us. He lives within us. He talks with us. For God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. We are the mobile temples of the Holy Spirit. If we're born again, truly of the Spirit of God, repentant of our sin, whatever that may be, whether it be idolatry, whatever it is, anything that would cause a, a barrier between us and the living God has got to go. For we are the temple. He wants to live in us. He wants to walk in us. He wants to be our God. He wants us to be his people. Anything outside the life and the teaching and the actions of Jesus Christ is not of, not of God, it's of man. In verse 17, that goes the great warning. Backing up the warning about how shall we escape when we neglect the word of God. When we neglect it for ourselves, we're neglecting it for those that were supposed to be rich in for Christ. And the great command in verse 17, Wherefore come out from amongst them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Here we see the danger to the believers that are not attending to the word of God. <coughs> to the believers that are happy to sit under such teaching. A great warning. But then there's a responsibility that every believer has for the unsaved. I know many people think they don't need to be saved. I've met people who thought they were too good they didn't need to be saved. I've known people, I've met people that thought they were too bad couldn't be saved. Both lies are from the devil. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have been listening or will be listening by internet in any shape or form, are you saved today? Have you a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today? Or are you just happy to go along with idolatry and doctrines of devils? Maybe you need healing today. Well, Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and he's still the same today. If you want to give your life to the Lord, 
truly genuine and you wanted to give your life to the Lord and go to repent and walk away from every hindrance to eternal life, I would like to pray with you and for you. If you want to give your life to the Lord, just pray this little prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of all my sin. I turn away from it. And I'm calling upon you to be my Lord and be my Savior. I'm asking you to come and dwell within me that I may know you and I may be resurrected spiritually. That I may be spiritual I want to you. So Father God, I'm asking you in Jesus' name. Write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. Lead me and guide me and draw me onto yourself. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray for those that will call upon your name. I pray, Lord, that you will meet them at the point of their need. I pray, Father God, that they will know what it is to be led of your spirit. Pray, Lord, you'll lead them to a Bible teaching, Bible believing church where they'll be taught the word of God. And I pray, Lord, of the any devi- any vices or whatever, anything hindering them today, I break it off them in the mighty name of Jesus. I praise you, Lord, you give us power to bind, you give us power to loose. So, Lord, I'm binding every attack of Satan, everything Satan is using against these people. I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, of the sickness or a disease, I praise you, Lord, that you bore it on the all on the cross. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Lord, any sickness and disease in their body, I come against it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I command it to come out. Spirit of infirmity and deformity come out in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that your healing power will flow through them from head to toe, making them every wet hole in Jesus' name. If you have been touched by the hand of God, we appreciate you. Let us know. Get in touch with Audrey, and we can encourage you and give you some more teaching on the Word of God. Father God, I praise you for every home represented in this house today. I pray household salvations, whole families and family circles saved, healed, delivered, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. I praise you, Lord, that your word stands forever. No devil out of hell can change it. Lord, you said it's forever, settled in heaven. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. The privilege, Lord, of going through the pages of your word. Remind ourselves, Lord, of your promises. So, Father God, I pray today we'll never be the same again. Lord, as we part one from another in this house today, we praise you, Lord, that you'll not be parting from us. You'll be going with each and every one of us. Lord, for you never leave us or you never forsake us. And I pray, O God, that you will give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and insight, Lord, whatever it is we need. Lord, to store up every gift that lies within us, that we will see the name of Jesus uplifted and glorified. And Father God, will be careful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory. For you and you alone, Lord, are worthy to be praised. And God's people said amen and shouted hallelujah. Praise God.